Hey, Crystal. Hey, Joseph. Is the home made for hospitality? Listen in to find out more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So you're making a claim, or posing the question, is the home for hospitality? Yeah, I mean, call me crazy, I feel like being home is a good feeling. And I feel like extending that feeling to other people is a good idea. It is a good idea. And I think it is particularly easier to imagine doing for me when we have hospitality for each other in our home first. So having hospitality for you and I as spouses and for our children is great. And a couple ways, I think one way in particular that stands out to me that we've done that recently that has made a big difference is whenever one of us comes home, we make it a point to say, welcome home, daddy, welcome home, mommy, welcome home, you know, to whoever is coming home. It's especially sweet because our two-year-old will say, welcome home, even if you're coming back from the office or something. <laughs> it's really, really cute. And by the office, Crystal means the office just down the hall from the living room. Uh -huh. Welcome home, Daddy, <laughs> which is just delightful. Yeah, so so one of the ways that we welcome, make make the home a place of welcome is through our speech to each other, mm -hmm. to, to say good morning to each other, to actually be grateful that they're still there, the, the spouse that we love and decided to spend our lives with. Like, you're still here. This is great. Welcome. So that's been a really, a really beautiful and practical way that we have been engaging in hospitality in our home, just with each other, with our closest neighbors. Yeah, and to our children too. We we welcome mm -hmm. them. We we are excited to see them in the morning. We're excited to see them when they come home from an adventure, and uh, we we want them to know that we want them here. We we like them being here. We we like them existing, and we like them you know, occupying roughly the same space as us. That that's a good thing. Now, another thing about space, a couple of months ago, we were cleaning up in our living room and one of our kids said, well, who's coming over later? And that we sort of had this realization that our kids knew we were having people over when we tidied up our living room, which is good on the one hand. And on the other hand, we realized, you know what, we should just do this for ourselves every day. And so since then, we've been really working on the habit of cleaning up the space every day for ourselves, again, so that we can provide that hospitality for our own family. But then also, it's neat because it's easier to have people over at the drop of a hat because we're doing that regularly. But it was also really neat, even as much as I was a little embarrassed by the question, it also made me happy to know that our kids have this association with, oh, we get things ready for welcoming other people into our home. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, and I think the welcoming of other people into the home is one where I think it's just really hard to not do it. No, really easy to not do it, really hard to do it. Mm -hmm. There are all of these obstacles. One, how do we make an invitation? Two, is the space that we have actually welcoming? We've had friends come over for dinner recently, and uh, our children were actually relatively well behaved uh, for two of the three times I'm thinking of. And in the third one, I had to talk to one of my sons about, did you know, like, we don't roughhouse in the living room, and we don't roughhouse when we have guests over? And he's like, I have no idea. Like, oh, that explains everything that just happened. Um, so, so there's this, this fear of not having everything put together, both with the family and, and the space. I mean, we invited a couple over after mass this past weekend, and we were literally like sweeping the kitchen floor and wiping the table as they were coming into the door, but it's worth it. It's worth being able to spend time with people. It's worth preparing by knowing the kinds of words to say, the kinds of actions to make, like offering people a glass of water, 
taking their coats. And, and then also the third thing, preparing the environment, having the house in such a state where either uh, it's clean enough or it's clean, clean enough, you know? Yeah. Being able to be okay with inviting people into our messiness is something that I really like doing. I like having people over when our house is not perfect. But I also have a certain standard that I'm comfortable with maintaining where I'm okay with somebody coming over, even though my floor hasn't been swept. But I do sweep my floor enough that I know that it won't be so bad <laughs> if somebody comes by last minute. And I'm not embarrassed or apologetic if I need to sweep the floor when somebody does show up. Yeah. So as far as like what we can do, you know, personally, I can make sure that I'm trying to be welcoming of my wife and of my children and making the home a place of welcome for, for them. So if there are projects around the house that I can contribute toward yeah. or chores that I can be helping with so that people feel welcome, that's something that I can do. I, I don't have to just sit back and, and lament that this hasn't been done. I can do the thing. And then I can also be bold and I can invite people to come spend time with us in our home because it's delightful. That's what the home is for, I think. That's where culture is being made and friendship can be forged. And the more, something I found is the more often that we have people over, the easier it is to have people over more often. And this has been really neat for me to see in myself of once we're in the habit of regularly having a family over for dinner, by regularly, I mean at least once a week, sometimes more than that. But even if for you, if you're not doing it at all, maybe try once a month or maybe try every six weeks or maybe even quarterly would be enough. But once I get in the habit of having people over, for one, the house stays in better shape, is more ready for guests because we just had guests. <laughs> and for two, I'm a lot more comfortable with all the different steps that go into bringing somebody into my home and helping them enjoy the, themselves in our space. And so the more practiced I get at it, the more comfortable it feels for me. And frankly, it's come to the point where if I look at a weekend and I see that we don't have anyone coming over and we haven't had anyone over during the week, I I start sending out invitations because I just know that the weekend won't be as much fun or won't be the same if we don't have somebody into our home. I don't want to say I'm addicted to having people over. That's probably kind of dramatic, but but I, I really like it. I crave it. I seek it out now. Yeah. And it's, it's good to remember to do this in a rightly ordered fashion. Mm -hmm. If, if, you're not welcoming your spouse, mm -hmm. then that's that's the first place to begin. And if your children don't feel welcome, uh, that's the next step. And then after that, we can talk about having neighbors over. We can talk about having coworkers over. We can talk about having people after church coming over. Um, but it be begins with, am I disposed to welcome my spouse? Mm -hmm. And we can be. We can we can not take them for granted. We can be glad for their existence and glad for this opportunity to share common space with them, and and to prepare that space uh, so that we can say, yeah, even in how I w do the dishes, I want you to know that I want you to feel welcome here. Mm -hmm. So these are things to keep in mind. The home, uh, as far as hospitality goes, this is something we have control over. This is something that we have dominion over. It is our domain, and we uh, we can use it for good. We can use it to welcome. Yeah. This is a little challenge. I challenge you to think of a way that you can be more hospitable to your spouse. Maybe that's saying welcome home when they get home. Maybe it's um, helping them unpack and get situated when they walk in the door. Maybe that's boiling them a cup of tea and bringing it to them when they're working in the office. Um, and if you do something and have a moment to share it with us, we would love to hear about it at hello at our outpost.org. Or if you want to maybe like take a picture on social media and tag us at our outpost, we'd love to hear about how you are being more hospitable to your spouse. All right. Pray us out in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love for your graciousness and I pray that you would help us to grow in hospitality to one another. 
We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.